On December 3, 2008, a convention on cluster munitions was held in Oslo, Norway, where a treaty was signed to prohibit the use, transfer, production, and stockpiling of cluster munitions. Cluster munitions, commonly referred to as cluster bombs, are explosive devices that carry hundreds of submunitions or bomblets. These bombs are designed to inflict damage over a large area in a single deployment, targeting areas such as runways or enemy territories. Recognized for their lethal impact on both military and civilian populations, the signing of the treaty prohibiting these weapons was deemed necessary. In this video, with the help of 3D animation, we'll see how this deadly cluster bombs work in detail. We will examine two types of cluster bombs, the CBU-87, which is a multi-purpose cluster bomb that contains hundreds of submunitions, and CBU-105, a sensor-fused cluster munition equipped with multiple skeet warheads designed to destroy up to 40 armored battle tanks in a single deployment. Let's take a deeper look at these weapons. Cluster bombs are primarily designed to inflict damage over a large area in a single deployment. But modern cluster bombs can be designed to hit specific targets like armored tanks. This is the CBU-87. CBU stands for Cluster Bomb Unit. It is a combined effects munition type cluster bomb. In simple words, it is a multi-purpose bomb. It explodes like a hand grenade, burns like an incendiary bomb, and destroys tanks like an armor-piercing weapon. Developed by Honeywell and manufactured by Northrop Grumman, it was first introduced to the United States Air Force in 1986. Weighing around 950 pounds, it is 7 feet 8 inches long, has a diameter of 15.6 inches, and is priced around $14,000. It is designed to be deployed from various aircraft such as the F-15E, A-10 Warthog, B-52, and the F-A-18 at any altitude and airspeed. It consists of five main components, the sensor and fuse assembly, the tail section, the outer body, the inner cushions, and the submunitions. The forwardmost section consists of the sensor and fuse assembly. The most modern sensor used on this bomb is the FCU-39B sensor, and the fuse used is the SUU-65B fuse. This fuse is designed to detonate in the air, which is why it is called an airburst fuse. As the bomb approaches the ground, the sensor measures its height above ground level and sends a signal to the fuse, triggering it to detonate. If you look closely, there are a few selector knobs present near the sensor assembly. They are used to select the required altitude at which the fuse detonates, and the speed at which the bomb spins in the air. This process is called fuse arming. By using these knobs, the accuracy of the bomb reduces because we are disabling the proximity sensor and enabling the timed fuse detonation where the fuse is triggered at a predetermined time. This method is effective at low altitudes, especially below 1,500 feet. The rear end consists of the tail assembly. For stabilizer fins are positioned at a 45-degree angle to the axis of the bomb. The fins remain in the retracted position and are deployed once the bomb is released from the aircraft, and they help the bomb to spin at the required revolutions per minute. The bomb must spin to disperse the submunitions effectively. On top of the bomb, you can see a couple of wires. These are arming wire conduits. Two wires are connected to the fuse and sensor section, and the others are connected to the tail assembly. The pilot can arm the bomb from the cockpit through these wires. Two suspension lugs are provided to attach the bomb to the aircraft. When the fuse is activated, it ignites a long, rod-like explosive charge that runs from the nose to the tail section of the bomb. This is called the separation charge, which separates the outer body into three parts. The submunitions are enclosed in cushions to keep them from moving. The CBU-87 carries a total of 202 submunitions or bomblets. If you are enjoying this video, 
subscribe to SYG Design Works for more advanced animations, and click on the bell icon to get notified when we upload a new video. This is the BLU-97 Combined Effects Submunition, manufactured by General Dynamics Ordnance and Tactical Systems. It weighs 3.3 pounds, is 6.6 .6 inches long in stowed position, and 14 inches in extended position, and has a diameter of 2.5 inches. It has an outer cover and a cap on the top. This is called a spider cap due to its resemblance to a spider's legs. Inside the cap, there is an inflatable decelerator. A spring is placed at the bottom, and a collar is placed above the warhead. This is the body of the warhead that bursts into tiny metal fragments when the charge is detonated, just like a hand grenade. Inside the body, there is an explosive charge made of cyclotol, and it weighs around 287 grams. A copper cone, known as a liner, is placed inside the charge, which turns into a high-velocity jet and penetrates the tank's armor. This type of warhead assembly is known as a shape charge assembly, and they are commonly used in armor-piercing missiles. Above the explosive charge and directly below the fuse assembly is a ring-like structure made of zirconium, known as zirconium sponge. When ignited, the zirconium sponge burns at temperatures ranging from 392 degrees Fahrenheit to 2192 degrees Fahrenheit, producing incendiary effects and burning down everything in its path. When the submunitions are released, the spider cap flies off. The spring inside the body pushes the entire warhead section up. Then, the decelerator is inflated to create aerodynamic drag, slowing down the submunition and helping it reach the target in a proper orientation. This is an F-15 fighter jet, carrying the CBU-87 cluster bombs. We'll use this fighter to deliver the bomb to the target. This is the target, an enemy military base. First, the bombs are released from the aircraft. Immediately, the fins deploy, causing the bomb to spin at a predetermined RPM. Once the required altitude is reached, the outer body opens, and the cushions and tail sections separate. All the 202 submunitions are now dispersed over the target area. The faster the bomb spins, the larger the area the submunitions will cover on the ground. The decelerator is inflated, causing the submunitions to slow down and tilt towards the ground. The submunitions now rain down on the target area. The primary fuse is an impact fuse, which triggers an explosion when the submunition hits the ground or the target. Most of them explode on the ground, damaging runways and burning things down like an incendiary bomb. The ones that successfully hit an armored vehicle will function as an armor-piercing weapon. When the charge detonates, the copper lining transforms into a high-speed jet that penetrates the tank's armor and destroys it from within. The reason this bomb was prohibited is due to its impact on civilian populations. This bomb is not a smart bomb, and many of them fail to explode even after striking the ground. Each submunition contains two fuses. If the main fuse does not detonate upon impact, the secondary fuse triggers an explosion. The secondary fuse, known as the always acting fuse, contains metal ball bearings. When the submunition hits the ground, the movement of these bearings activates the explosion. But sometimes, the secondary fuse also fails to activate and the unexploded submunitions remain on the ground. This secondary fuse is now very sensitive to movements. If someone tries to hold or even accidentally touch the submunitions, the ball bearings will move, triggering an explosion and eliminating that person on the spot. This bomb has unintentionally caused numerous civilian fatalities in Iraq, Afghanistan, Kuwait, and Kosovo. Unlike the CBU-87, the CBU-105 is a sensor-fused cluster munition designed to take out armored vehicles. Weighing 941 pounds, it is 7.5 feet long and has a diameter of 15.7 inches. The only difference between these two bombs is the tail section and the submunitions. 
the CBU-105 is a smart bomb with the WCMD guidance tail kit. WCMD stands for Wind Corrected Munitions Dispenser. This tail kit uses an inertial guidance system updated with GPS data from the aircraft before releasing the bomb, making it a high-precision weapon. The WCMD tail kit can be used on the CBU-87 bomb as well and is designated CBU-103. This bomb carries 10 BLU-108 submunitions that are attached to a central spine. This is the BLU-108 submunition. It weighs 63.9 pounds, is 31.1 inches long, and has a diameter of 5.2 inches. The topmost part contains two drogue parachutes, which slow down the submunitions and position them vertically. Below that, there are two solid rocket motors that propel the submunition upwards like a rocket, while also causing it to spin. Below the rocket motors, there are four skeet warheads. When the required altitude is reached, the skeet warhead mechanism activates this way. They are held together by explosive bolts that explode when it's time to release the warheads. This is the sensor-fused skeet warhead. It weighs 7.5 pounds, is 3.7 inches long, and has a diameter of 5 inches. It has a sensor section, the electronics for the sensors, an explosive charge, and a copper liner designed to penetrate tank armor. This liner does not have a conical shape. It is concave and has 16 small indentations. The primary concave liner is called an explosively formed penetrator, or EFP. Upon detonation, the main liner transforms into a high-speed jet that penetrates the tank's armor while the areas between the indentations create high-speed spherical structures known as pseudo-EFPs, which also breach the armor. This configuration is referred to as Combined Effects EFP because it can effectively hit heavily armored vehicles, soft-skin targets, and enemy personnel in the vicinity of the target. The Skeet Warhead consists of two sensors, a dual-mode active laser and a passive infrared sensor. The infrared sensor detects the target's heat signature, particularly from the vehicle's engine, while the active laser sensor detects the target's profile. When the bomb is released, the outer cover separates, and the BLU-108 submunitions are dispersed over the target area. The drogue parachutes are released to slow down the submunitions and orient them vertically. After reaching a certain altitude, the radar altimeter, located at the bottom of the submunition, measures the altitude and cuts off the drogue parachutes while simultaneously ejecting the outer casing. The skeet warhead mechanism activates and immediately the solid rocket motors propel the submunition upwards while spinning it rapidly. When the required spin rate and centrifugal force are achieved, the bolts holding the skeet warheads will explode, releasing the skeet warheads. The sensors activate and are now actively searching for the target. The target is a platoon of enemy tanks. The skeet warhead locks down on the target and sets off the explosive charge. Battle tanks are vulnerable to attacks from the top because the upper section of the tanks are not heavily armored. The high-speed jet penetrates the tank's armor from the top and destroys it internally. This way, a single CBU-105 bomb can effectively destroy multiple tanks on the battlefield. The BLU-108 submunitions are considered safer than the BLU-97 submunitions because they have three safety features that activate if the skeet warheads fail to detect a valid target. The safety features are time-based self-destruction, altitude-based self-destruction, and timeout deactivation. In time-based self-destruction mode, the skeet warhead will self-destruct after eight seconds from launch. In altitude-based self-destruction mode, it will self-destruct within 50 feet of altitude above the ground. If both safety features fail, the timeout deactivation feature activates, 
and prevents the warhead from exploding, making it inert. This way, the skeet warheads that remain on the ground unexploded can be moved to a safer place without the fear of explosion. And now you know how these deadly cluster bombs work. Thank you for watching.